Welcome. This is 49D1 and it's called Superposition and Interference of Waves. And I need to do a little diagram or two to begin with. Um, what we're talking about here is when you get a wave that can travel along a piece of string, for example, but is reflected back on itself. So if I were to pluck the string, I'd find some of the energy would go in this direction and be reflected back. And I'd find some of the other energy would go in that direction and be reflected back. And what I'd see is that for a piece of string, it would very quickly be getting energy from both directions. There'd be energy coming from the left and energy coming from the right. And we'd get this curious pattern, and I'll show you the curious pattern because it's kind of useful. The simplest pattern I'd see is that I would get what's called a standing wave, and it would look something like that. It would flop around in the middle, but not at the edges. And then there's another possibility where it would flop around like this. And there could be a still point in the middle. That's called a node. I'll show you a third one. And these are all possible and they all occur. So the wave energy manifests itself as a standing wave. You can't see a, tre a crest going down the string and it, it basically goes down the string, comes back and then you get the establishment of these standing waves. Um, another visualization is I have a set of speakers in two dimensions. So rather than reflecting off the ends of the, of the, of the uh, fret, of the uh, bridge and the fret, we have just energy being produced from two speakers, for example. And if I was to look at the crest, let's say this was a, a tank of water, and I was looking at the surface of the water, I might be able to see the crests of the waves caused. If I took a picture, I'd see the crests of the waves caused by this one speaker. And then if I looked here, I'd see the crest of the wave caused by this other speaker. And there's points where if I took a picture, I'd see, well, that crest matched that crest and that crest matched that crest and that crest matched that crest. And along this line, I would see a lot of wave activity a lot of waves and there'd be another one along that line and there'd be a some more wave activity along this line along these lines we get a lot of oscillations in between we'd get a curious thing in between we tend to get these patterns of pa calm now again, it's a standing wave pattern. Just as this wave oscillates upwards and downwards, and that wave oscillates upwards and downwards, and that wave oscillates upwards and downwards, but we get these points of calmness called nodes. So here, we'll get these points of calmness, and then we'll get these other points when we're getting a lot of wave activity. What's going on here is that we're getting waves from two sources that are uh, uh, superpositioning with each other they are basically occupying the same space and because the medium is linear it's well behaved 2 plus 2 equals 4 we're getting uh, a standing wave pattern as a result of the interference the two wave energies mess with each other and there's this well I'll get to that in a minute there's this this curious effect that I'll show you so there's a lot going on in this slide, so let's take a couple of minutes with it. So, let's look at this first panel. This first panel says when two or more waves move in the same linear medium, linear just means two and two equals four, then the resultant wave is a, is a sum of the two waves. So here's a diagram, and it's showing what happens at a point because of wave one and as time passes this point will oscillate upwards and downwards and upwards and downwards as time passes 
And if I turn that wave off and now I turn on the second wave, I'll see a, a similar sine wave, but what happens is it's displaced slightly in time. And so the crests do not coincide. They arrive at different time. This crest arrived early and this crest arrived later. And so they don't coincide in time. And so what happens is if I turn both sources on, then what I get is a curious situation where because one crest tends to occur when the second wave wants to produce a trough or nearly a trough, I get less of a less of an amplitude. So this point, wherever it is, would tend to be somewhat of a quiet point. It would be near a node. It's not quite a node, but it's near a node. If I picked another point, then I might get the crests arriving together or nearly together, and I would get more of an amplitude. And so I'd see more wave activity than with just one wave. And I'm trying to show this in the next two, where I'm showing a piece of string, and for whatever reason, the crest of the first wave arrives with the crest of the second wave. And so what I would see in time is a very energetic wave. It has the same frequency as the original waves, but it has twice the amplitude in this case because they're both the same original wave of A, uh, amplitude of A. So this is so-called constructive interference. It is sometimes referred to as being in phase. And we can say that the phase difference is an even number of pi radians, including zero. I need to explain that a little bit. I'll get, come back to that. The um, second panel shows destructive interference. Because of the position that we're at on the string, we get a crest arriving at the same time as a trough arrives. And so we get a situation where the crest cancels out the trough and we get no oscillation. So this is a node. And we'd say, well, this is destructive interference because the two waves cancelled each other out at this point. And the phase different, uh, we call that anti-phase, not just out of phase. Out of phase can mean you're not quite lined up. But anti-phase means that the crest comes at the same time as the trough. And we say the phase difference is an odd number of pi radians. I'll explain this pi radian business in a, in a minute. And then we have 2D constructive interference. So now we're looking at, say, the surface of water. And I have a little generator of ripples here and a little generator of ripples there. And the top wave is producing crests, which are in blue and troughs which are in green and what you see is that there's these points where a crest occurs with a crest and a trough occurs with a trough and they they can be used to map out these red lines and what this designates is a hallway, a line, where there's a lot of constructive interference. We would get a lot of wave action along that red line. But if I look for points where a crest occurs with a trough, so green with blue, green with blue, green with blue, green with blue, I see these purple lines where there's cancellation, destructive interference on those purple lines. So in this water surface, I'd get a lot of wave action in some directions. And I'd get very little wave action in other directions. 
So patterns of constructive interference and destructive interference in two dimensions. Now, about this, 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 this uh, pi radians or, or the like. I can best explain it by using this, this diagram here. And what I say is that the behavior, what I get, depends upon does a crest occur with a crest or a trough occur with the trough. And they've been produced at the same time. The crest has is been is produced with a crest. But depending upon my position, I can get a delay. Uh, um, I can get the, the waves to be uh, out of synchronization. So I produce these. So if I, let me pick a point in space. So I'm going to pick this point here. Now, can you see that it's the first, the last trough to be produced from the top oscillator is coinciding with not the last, but the second to last trough to be produced from the bottom oscillator. You know, this is the last trough to be produced. And this is the second to last trough to be produced. So this raises the issue that I could get the crest that was most recently produced by source one coinciding with the crest that was produced five crests ago by source two. Why? Because it's much further away from source two. So it took all this time to get here. And now it corresponds, it collides, if you like, with the most recent crest from source one. And it doesn't matter. That's the point. It doesn't matter. The delay doesn't matter. As long as crest comes with crest and trough comes with trough, we'll get constructive interference. And no matter whether it's the third to last crest with a seventh to last cross trough, it doesn't matter. As long as you get crest with a trough, you'll get destructive interference. So, okay, we need to keep track of these path differences to figure stuff out. If there is, let me go back to this diagram. If there's no path difference, if the distance from the top speaker is the same as the distance from the bottom speaker, so we get no path difference, then we'll get constructive interference. If the distance from one minus the distance from the other, if the path difference is a whole number of wavelengths, we'll still get constructive interference. If the path difference is two whole numbers of wavelength, we'll still get constructive interference. It turns out, as long as the path difference is an even number of half landers, so it's one half, uh, two, land, two half landers, four half landers, eight half landers, 12 half landers, or no half landers, then we will get uh, uh, constructive interference. The crest will arrive with a crest, doesn't matter when it was produced. And if the path difference is an odd number of half wavelengths, then we'll get destructive interference. Doesn't matter if it's a half a wavelength or three and a half wavelengths or nine and a half wavelengths or 19 and a half wavelengths. As long as there's an odd number of half wavelengths, we'll get destructive interference. Now, sometimes we prefer to talk in terms of radians rather than wavelengths. One lambda equals two pi radians. Remember that from the circular motion given as the math for the simple harmonic motion. 
So we could rephrase this top line and say, as long as the path difference is an uh, even number of pi radians. If there's two pi radians in a circle, then one pi equals half a circle. That means half a lambda. So even number of half wavelengths is like saying an even number of pi radians. We will get constructive interference. And if we have an odd number of pi radians, then we'll get destructive interference. So the absolute distance from the two sources of energy doesn't matter. It's the path difference length that matters. And if that path difference length is an odd number of half wavelengths, we're going to get destructive interference. And if it's an even number of half wavelengths, we're going to get constructive interference. And we can represent that in terms of uh, if we get an even number of pi radians phase difference, it's constructive. And if we get an odd number of pi radians phase difference, then it's uh, destructive. So even constructive, odd destructive. Cool. So let's have a look at these questions here. Recalling the notes, what does this diagram represent? Well, we have a crest occurring with a crest, and that gives us twice the amplitude, same frequency. That's going to be in phase interference of waves. Another way, recalling the notes, what does this diagram represent? I have choices between constructive and destructive interference, and this is constructive interference. So when you in phase interference gives constructive interference. The two terms can be used interchangeably. And then recalling the notes, what do the purple lines represent? Well, these are the lines where a crest which is in blue correspond to a trough which is in green for, say, ripples on water. And when we get a crest occurring with a trough, we're going to get destructive interference. So the purple lines are destructive interference, and they're in two dimensions. So there we have it.